Hi everybody, Cheaply Chic, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome, I'm so glad you're here. So today is typically when I would get started in my journal and I would work in the first page. This is my usual procedure and what I do. But I decided before I get started in the journal this time, I really wanna make a master board. I loved having a master board in the last collection and I used it for some tuck spots, maybe some tags, some things that I had done. I love collaging. So I just, I feel like I wanna get started that way, which I'm going to do today. I am going to use the base of this manila folder. I'm actually going to trim it, but I'm going to leave it whole this time. So I will zoom out to try to get a better angle on that for you. But I also want to say that instead of using my book pages that came in the collection, even though you absolutely can, there's great pieces for collage in there. There's a napkin with some decoupage, little butterflies and flowers. There's a piece of glassine paper, but I don't want to use any of those on my master board. <laughs> in the last collection, and I had done a little bit of collage work, I really feel like I like to keep mine a little on the simple side because I really like to decorate it after I've cut it up and I decide how I'm going to use it. So I'm going to use book pages and vintage music paper and some other things just that I already have in my stash. Maybe I'll use some of that wallpaper. I have some scraps left over of that. And um, yeah, so I'm just gonna get started making a master board today that we can use on various projects. So I thought you'd like to come along with me. Let's get started. All right, so I decided to use matte Mod Podge for this project. Typically I like using Tim Holtz collage medium, but this is such a big project and that can be a little pricey. <laughs> so I went for the Mod Podge. The problem with Mod Podge, especially in the area in which I live, is the humidity. There, It tends to stay sticky, like forever. So that's kind of annoying. The collage medium doesn't do that. But like I said, this is a big project. So I'm going with the Mod Podge. So I'm just picking out some book pages here. I grabbed some Edith Holden pages. These are vintage dictionary pages. I'm going to grab some Greg shorthand right here, little pages. I love the different colors of the paper and I also love the different fonts and print of the papers, especially for something with collage. And then I had this gardening book sitting on my desk and I decided to grab a few of these pages. They're nice and large, so I decide that I want to get started with those. I can be overwhelmed with projects like this. This file folder, once you open it up, it's pretty big. And I always have this fear of getting started. I don't know if you're like that, but it, like, it can feel overwhelming. So I decide to start with the biggest papers that I'm going to use. I put down some of the Mod Podge just to get it started, to get the page in place, and then I just finish gluing it down. Now I still have a pretty big blank canvas here, so I decide to grab another one of those gardening book pages since it's my largest, and I'm going to turn it on its side. One of the fun things about collage is the fact that your book pages, you really do want them to go every which way, upside down, sideways. So I'm just trying to get that started.
All right, and I must be feeling pretty brave at this point. I reach for one of the dictionary book pages. I have most of my space covered now with the gardening book pages, and I want to add something that has a little bit of different color, a little bit of different text. So one of the other things I haven't mentioned yet is because this master board is going to be cut up into smaller pieces later on when the project's finished, you really do want to make sure that you are getting glue on every area of your book page. Of course, you can always go back and make sure your spots are glued down later, but for me, I like to make sure that I get enough glue everywhere so that I don't tear my paper later when I'm cutting it up. So now I'm grabbing my Edith Holden book page. I want to tear off that extra edge of other papers so it's not sticking out and making my project a little hard. I decided to save those flowers for a different project. Those are super cute. So I'm just going to work my way around the page here and just get my base done. Now that I have the first layer finished on my master board here, I decide to take some other book pages and add a second layer. There's really a lot of empty space again. If you think of that file folder in the beginning, now I have these large areas that need more book pages. I know in my mind that I will be cutting these into maybe something that's about two to four inches wide. So I want to make sure that there actually is collage in the background of those elements I'll be cutting up. So I started with that shorthand page. Again, I like that antiqued book page against the starker white book page. It adds a little bit of some character there. And then I like, you know, these pictures here. I'm going to use some Edith Holden text here, and I'm going to just place that around my board. And I'm also going to play with some music paper. I'll also mention for those of you just getting started with something like this and you might be intimidated by thinking about the text or the colors, the other thing that I'm paying attention to are shapes, I guess you could say. If you look at this master board, there's rectangles and squares. If you ignored the colors, even the text, um, I'm looking at a couple different rectangles. I'm looking at some squares. So how would you place those in your mind's eye? Where would you place those longer strips like that music I'm adding here? I decided I, the other thing I will mention, I love the Edith Holden text and I have a really hard time covering things up. This is something about me. Some people you'll watch collage and they don't care. They'll go right over the top of things and that makes them happy. But sometimes I just, there are things I just can't cover up. So I tore that music strip down a little bit and it would have been fine either way. So don't be intimidated or too scared to try. Um, practice really does make perfect. And even if you get something, it doesn't look perfect to you. You don't feel like you got something right. In the end, you're cutting it all up. So just don't 
just play around with it, practice, and just have fun. All right, like I said, I want to make sure that my book pages are completely sealed here on this project so that later when I cut it up, I don't rip any of the book pages. So I'm going to go over my entire collage board here with Mod Podge and then give it a good dry. All right, the next thing I decide is to pick up these chipboard stickers that I had gotten at Hobby Lobby quite some time ago. Now, this is something I wish I wouldn't have done only because they're so thick, which causes me a little bit of struggle later on, but we'll talk about that later. So I love these roses. I love the vintage print of them and they really do match my journal and the collection. So I'm going to start by peeling off the back. Again, these are a thicker chipboard sticker. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm peeling them off. I'm kind of sticking them down in place. And again, I know that this board's going to be cut up into different sizes of pieces. So I'm just kind of placing them around where I think they look best for now. The problem is um, the Mod Podge has, if any of you have worked with Mod Podge, I'm guessing most of you have, it has that satin-like finish to it. Like even though this says it's matte, it's not really that matte. It actually is more satin, I would say. So these stickers don't want to stick. You can see here, I'm just picking it right back up off the board. So I decide to glue them down with the Mod Podge. So just one more mention about these chipboard stickers. The problem that they caused is really the fact that it made everything so much thicker. When I went to cut up my master board later on, it just, it was, I had to fight with tearing and um, just making sure that the sticker cut straight. Of course, it's gonna dull my blade a little bit more. I wish I would have looked around my craft room for just normal stickers or normal prints of some kind. So I just want to mention that it really is easier if you use something that's not so thick. Now to make everything going on here blend into the background. This will all be the background of my project. So I have some heavy gesso in my stash. You can use white paint. You can use whatever it is that you want to neutralize your master board with. So I love this heavy gesso by Prima. I'll link it down below for anyone who might be interested in it. And I'm just going to 
kind of dry brush over everything. I definitely want the elements to still show through the background, so I'm not just painting over it all, but I especially want to blend these large flowers into the background. I don't want them to be prominent in the end, so I'm making sure to go over all of those really well too. All right, so I grabbed a couple of stencils. This first one, I love the wildflower print and I wanted to give it a try. So I'm smearing some of that heavy gesso into the stencil and I decide, yeah, it's cute, but I don't think that's what I wanna do across my whole master board. So I grabbed this flourish stencil, which is the one I normally grab, it's my favorite. I, but I also do love that flourish pattern with the vintage roses. It's just, it's classic, right? So I'm going to take my stencil and just add some of this heavy gesso around the master board. It is one of my favorite elements of this project, so I do try to make sure I hit enough spots on the board that it could be in all of the pieces I end up cutting up later. But I'll also mention, I am making sure to go over those chipboard stickers, those roses, because it also is another element that just helps blend them into the background. Okay, so I broke out the watercolors and this is one of my favorite things to do and I do apologize for the video here. I get a little crazy with the master board. It is rather large and my camera is pretty close to the project. So I'm sorry if it seems like it's flying around all over the place here, but I'm trying to get my watercolors to run down the board. So I'm adding some water to the board itself trying to get my watercolors to run. I'm struggling to get started here a little bit, but this is so much fun. I love adding ink and watercolors over stenciling like this. It's just, yeah, it's just pretty fun. So I'm going to be using some different colors here and filling in my board. I should probably mention that I am picking certain colors that I do think match. This collection, the journal that I'm playing in, these roses, the greens and the pinks. So I'm using the pink and I want again for that paint to hit every piece that I end up cutting up later. So I'm just going around the board, going over the flowers and the stenciling, adding the greens, adding the pinks. All right, so we are coming to the end of this project. If you're interested in seeing how I end up using this master board, at least in the beginning, I'll be sharing a video toward the end of the week, so keep your eyes open for that if you're interested. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit that like button. It does help me out. And everyone who purchased this 
collection. Thank you so very much. I sold out pretty quickly, which, you know, is great for me. So thank you all so, so very much. I appreciate you. And I definitely enjoy hearing your feedback and how much you're enjoying it. So if you're new to my channel, I do have a Facebook group where I try to share other inspiration throughout the month. So um, that link will be in the description box down below if you're interested. I'm also over on Instagram. That link is down below as well as the design team working with this collection. All of their links are down below as well. So be sure to check them out. They are amazing creative women. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.